There goes nothing. Oh man. Ah, no turning back now. <laughs> oh boy. We've been working on our custom dream home for two years now. We did our own excavation, concrete work, sawmilling, and even roofing, windows, and doors. No, we're not contractors. We're not even really what we'd call amateurs. In most every phase, we have little, if any, experience with building. That has not stopped us yet. Do you guys think anyone's ever fallen asleep on a roof? while working on a roof. 12-12 pitch. We moved in about a year ago with the absolute basics. A bathroom, a sink, oven, fridge, and heat. We expect completing our home will take several years as we're doing it as time and money allow without taking on debt or hiring things out. To make things more comfortable and to practice for bigger projects, we built a small kitchenette laundry from scratch. To really make the project exciting, we decided to try our hand at a butcher block top. We both loved that style and we just happened to have a massive firewood pile begging to be salvaged. Oh, this guy has just been redeemed. Oh yeah, come with us to the wood shop. After a couple of days doing all the hard work, dimensioning, planing, joining, and gluing up the top, we did the scariest thing ever. We cut a huge hole right in the middle. Once the sink was fitted up, the top was sanded and the edges were beveled, it was finally ready for finish. There goes nothing, oh man. Ah, no turning back now. <laughs> oh boy. We've never worked with epoxy before this project. It seems like we see everyone using it for the usual waterfall tables, ocean coasters, you've seen them. We did some testing with a small scrap we had laying around and we had really good success. What we didn't realize was how many mistakes we'd make on the actual top. If you're new to epoxy or you've really fudged up your first project, we hope these tips that we learned will help you. Make sure you set your project up properly. Think way ahead to your final coat, which will be a flood coat. It's exactly what it sounds like, a flood. That means you're gonna be generous with epoxy, and you'll want not just a drop cloth like newspaper as we did, but something with curbs. Our second time around, we used a piece of super thin drop cloth. The epoxy doesn't stick to it, and then we use small blocks of wood to make a curb. If you don't do this, trust us, the epoxy will find its way out and onto whatever is below. Ask us how we know. You're going to have drips that stick to the edges if you allow the epoxy to flow over the ends and the edges. To make getting a super clean edge easy with no sanding at all, use packing tape. Yeah, the clear shiny stuff, not masking tape. The epoxy won't stick to it and it'll literally just break off as you peel the tape, leaving a super clean edge. Do this everywhere you don't want little drips of epoxy, inside, outside, on the ends, the back, wherever you want to keep the epoxy away. And use several pieces. It's cheap and it's easy. It'll make your life way easier when you're done. Our first few coats, we didn't do this and we had to sand the bumps off, which is super annoying and messy. Tape on the second time worked a charm. We suppose it kind of goes without saying, but you're going to want to elevate your project. And when you do that, you're also gonna to wanna to make sure that it is super level in all directions. This will save you a lot of time chasing epoxy, which we'll talk about in a second. It'll also prevent what we call the thick side, thin side, as the epoxy wants to flow toward the low area. We did pretty good, but trust us, dead level is worth adding some lifting blocks or whatever you need to do to get it right. When mixing your epoxy, read your instructions very carefully. 
it will likely recommend you thoroughly scrape the sides and the bottom of your mixing container, as well as scrape your stirring stick into the container multiple times. Using a thin, flat stick like a paint stick is super important. It will also tell you to pour your mix into a second mixing container and mix again. This all is to ensure that the two parts of the mix come together thoroughly. And trust us, once you put them together, you can't really tell them apart. You want to make sure they're mixed well. If you skip this, or you don't do it really good, you're going to end up with soft spots where the resin won't harden, and you won't know it for a long time. You'll just keep waiting, and waiting, and waiting, and it'll never harden. It's a nightmare to dig it out. And then at best, when you go to repair it, you might get another 99% with another coat of epoxy. We had an entire area of soft spots. Here's how it happens. You get to the bottom of the container and then you start scraping because you need a little bit more and that's when you get in trouble. If you scrape out part A or part B only, you're gonna have a soft spot. There are many tricks to mixing epoxy well. One of them is to mix slowly. If you mix the epoxy fast, like with a machine, like a drill, you actually build heat in the epoxy and that will actually make it go off faster. So mixing at a slower, more reasonable pace is good for you in the long run. Gives you more workable time. The other suggestion is to use a short, wide, round container with a flat bottom and flat sides. I'll say that again, short, wide, round, flat on the bottom and flat on the sides. These are all extremely important. Short and wide makes the epoxy spread out. If you use a tall, narrow container, it'll actually build more heat in the epoxy, which again, causes it to set up quicker and gives you less workable time. A short, wide container delays this. A flat bottom and flat sides ensure you can properly scrape them and get a thorough mix like we just mentioned. You want to avoid the dreaded soft spots at all costs, trust us. Getting a really good base coat is important. This coat is more like a sealer than it has anything to do with the finish. If you're coating something porous like wood, you have to get a really good base coat. The wood is gonna be really thirsty, so you'll apply epoxy and then you'll have dull spots. You have to stick with it. If you don't, you'll struggle on future coats. The bubbles will seem like they're endless coming from the wood, and that's just air coming from the wood into the epoxy. It'll also make it hard to get a level surface as the wood will randomly absorb some epoxy leaving a low spot. That's really a function of the porosity of different areas or hardness of different areas of the wood. So for that first coat, don't think so much about that crazy shiny finish you're trying to get from the epoxy. Think about sealing up whatever you're coating really, really good and don't stop until it's well sealed. If you see any dull spots at all, keep at it. If you don't scavenge the ends and the edges of your project, you'll waste a ton of epoxy. We simply dripped epoxy onto the top and kept doing this until it flows over the edges. Then scrape the edges to recover the epoxy before it drips and then you can just keep reapplying it to the top where you need it and keep that kind of cycle going. This way you should waste very little epoxy on each coat and you should never run out or have holidays or low spots because you ran out. If you have enough to get drips, then you have plenty to coat everything. You've just got to recover that. Once you're satisfied with the coat, then you can let the drips go. Have your propane torch handy for popping bubbles. Do this on every coat, including your seal coat. Don't stop popping bubbles until there are no more bubbles. We read somewhere that it's not the heat from the torch that causes the bubbles to pop, but the carbon dioxide. So getting super close with the torch isn't really necessary. Just aim and kind of wave it across. We didn't try a heat gun, maybe they work. We don't know, so we would recommend propane torch. We found that bubbles so small you couldn't even see them would pop. What you would see is there's a small ripple where the bubbles were as you wave the torch over them. So that tells us we were getting rid of bubbles we couldn't even see. To get a truly deep gloss, you need to remove bubbles until they're all gone and the coat is basically starting to set up. 
To get the truly glossy, flat, smooth, amazing epoxy look, you need to make your final coat a flood coat. It's exactly what it sounds like. You need to flood the surface and basically you don't want to have to spread the epoxy out. You just want it to flow. We started with a spiral from the middle of our area and then we worked outwards. The epoxy will eventually flow together. As you scavenge from the ends and the edges, you can use that to fill any spots that didn't flow together or maybe there's a low spot. If you mix slow and in the proper container, you'll have about 15 to 20 minutes to work the epoxy and you can easily fill in any low spots. If you just keep at it, keep scavenging, filling and dripping over the edges, you will get a very smooth surface and smooth edges. The good news is that the fix for nearly every epoxy mistake is more epoxy. We're stoked with how our top turned out and we're excited to do more epoxy projects in the future. It was a little rough getting started, but in the end, it looks amazing. By the way, if you love epoxy as a finish, but maybe not the glossy, we found a 600 grit wet sandpaper with a dry erase eraser made an amazing matte finish. And then we hit it with carnauba wax to protect it. We love our new butcher block top.